Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you do not want to miss out on any future weekly knife, gun, EDC, gear videos. Feel free to support me on Patreon, link down in the description, because this stuff costs money. So that would be really, really appreciated. But regardless, you watching is super appreciated as well, so thank you so much. Let's get right into the review. This is Blast from the Past, Kershaw Skyline. You ever seen this guy before? If you've been to the knife scene for the last decade or so, you may have stumbled upon one of these in a video or two, or ten. This was extremely popular back in the day, and there's still people looking for these things. You used to get these for around the $30 range or so back in 2011, 2012, 13, early 2010s. was extremely popular. The whole liner lock, G10 handle scale, simple blade, $35 range, HR13 MOV blade craze was going around, and the Skyline entered the competition and did very well, actually. But again, these are still pretty sought after today. You can get these used for about $70, $80, 85 almost $90. Bucks. Sometimes you find these brand new. You, can, you might be spending mid-hundreds, $140 bucks or so. Yeah, for, for such a simple kind of affordable knife, it, it's crazy how sought after these still are and how much up in price they went. It's actually insane. There's nothing really crazy about any of the materials. It's a very plain Jane kind of simple knife, but it's a great EDC utility blade. It's very good looking. It's very elegant. It's very simple. Sometimes less is more, you know, and that's kind of what this knife makes me think of, and I think that's one of the reasons it was so popular. Just They pretty much nailed everything and made it very affordable. It knows what it's trying to be, and it's perfectly, perfectly executed for what it is trying to be. Really awesome blade. A lot of knife history behind it, even though it's not all that old anyway, but I don't know why Kershaw doesn't just bring something like this back. Make a Skyline 2 or like a Skyline, a bigger Skyline or something. Kershaw, do it. I mean, if people are buying these used ones for 80 bucks. I'm not kidding. Like $80 for a good condition new one. I got this for 65 This is the cheapest I ever found. This was a bid I won. Uh, that, that's getting lucky, though. I usually see them go for higher than that. In worse condition than this one. Insane to think about. So anyway... Let's get the specs out of the way real quick. Overall length is 7.375 inches. The blade length is 3.125 inches, so just a hair above 3. The handle length calculates down to 4.25 inches. Weighs 2.5 ounces, according to their website. Sandvik 14C28N blade steel used to retail at $84.99. And again, funnily enough, you can get these used for about that price now. Let's just weigh this because it's something I like to do. Again, most websites... They're not always right about the weight. I don't know why that is, but let's check this guy out right here. Come on, scale. It is 2.52 ounces. Oh, Kershaw. Tricked us. You said 2.50. No, not a big deal. Basically, it's 2.5 ounces. So it's pretty lightweight for its size. G10 handle slabs there. We have a stainless steel liner lock. The liner only takes up the left of the handle, not the right, so it's mostly just G10. We just have one liner in there. And it's pretty elegant, actually. The knife is not lopsided, despite only one steel liner being in there, because you can see the G10 on the left is layered less than the G10 slab on the right. So to accommodate for the overall width, the thickness of the knife, I should say, that's what they did. They just cut out or used less G10 there. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Nice little attention to detail. No jimps anywhere on the knife except for the liner, speaking of which, which works very well. The G10 is rounded on the edges just a little bit. It's kind of squared off, but not super sharp or anything. It's a little bit rounded. We have what looks like an FRN backspacer in there. Bead blasted liner lock, it looks like. They said the blade is a stonewash finish. If it is, it's a very... Very minor stone wash. It almost looks like it's bead blasted, but if you look closely, it kind of looks like it's sparkling just a little bit. So I'm going to take Kershaw's word for it. These were bead blasted back when they made these guys. So 1760 is the model on it. It is assembled in the USA, so that's pretty cool too. Flipper knife. Comfortable. Decent amount to hold on to here. Big old thick ass finger choil for your finger choil? Finger choil for your index finger right there. Locks it in, so despite no jimping or anything anywhere else other than the liner to disengage it, that flipper and the choil right here accommodate each other and just make a big old choil for your finger. And then you can really lock in there anyway. Little curve right here on the handle, so your fingers naturally just kind of rest in there. 
it's not the most comfortable knife in the world or anything, but it's comfortable enough, especially right here around the bolster where your index finger fits. It's not really meant to be a super ergonomic, you know, multiple finger trial knife. It's just a very simple plain Jane knife. Isn't that beautiful? Very elegant, very simple. Again, less is more sometimes. There's not a whole lot going for it, but it's it's almost symmetrical in a way. I like the spear point blade we have on here. Hollow grind. It's not full flat, as you can see right there. Um, but again, just very elegant. Very simple, very elegant, very useful. There's a lot to hold on to as far as that finger trail is concerned, so you still lock in there. It works good enough. Um, no major complaints I have about it. It is left-hand carry only. So yeah, kind of sucks to the lefties, unfortunately. Tip up and tip down carry for this, but love the pocket lip. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Simple, kind of wide. It's, it's just, I, I like the way it looks. It's a good-looking pocket clip, and it's extremely functional, too. Perfect tension on this one. Not too tight, not too loose. Again, you can do tip down if you'd like. There's going to be a little bit less poking out of the pocket. If you go tip up like I do, there's actually considerably more poking out of the pocket. It looks like almost, you have like about almost an inch poking out instead of a good, I don't know, third of an inch down here. So that is a disadvantage if you go with the tip up, but I'm used to tip up, so I don't mind it. I prefer that anyway, especially for smaller knives. I think tip up works even better. Tip down, the only time I would want a tip down knife is on a huge, I'm talking massive, 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 you know, cold steel XL size, size folder with a six inch blade or something. But even then I carry those tip up, so whatever. A little lantern hole on there. Defense knife, uh, sure. I would not pick this for a defense knife, but it can work in a pinch. We have a good amount of, tra of traction on here, uh, just enough. Again, kind of feels like a Spyderco Tenacious as far as its G10 texture is concerned. Medium traction, fast. You do have to give it a bit of a wrist flick, at least on mine anyway. Because as you can see right there, it doesn't always open. Some flippers just fly out every single time. This one, you got to give it just a little wrist flick. Not the end of the world, but you have to keep that in mind. And you might think, well, you could just use the thumb studs to open it conventionally. Well, can you? Uh, yeah. They're kind of hard to get to, though. Even though there's a big old spacer that they're really small. You can open it conventionally. It's just not really comfortable. You have to kind of, you know, fing fumble around with your fingertips in order to get it open because they're not meant to be thumb studs they are actually in fact blade stops yes they stop the knife the blade of the knife anyway from over traveling from positive force so rather than having a stop pin in there embedded within the handle we instead have blade stops on the blade interesting why they did that i don't know but it is what it is they're just fine i just tend to not use them you can flick it out pretty easily actually just like so Every single time it works, but opening it conventionally, i.e. slowly, is you just you have to kind of dig your thumb in there a little bit. You can do it, but it's it's not really meant to be used that way, it looks like. What's funny, though, is that they look like they're thumb studs. They don't just look like cylinders. They actually have tapering on there. They're textured around the edges. Perfect design, actually. They're just kind of small and hard to get to. I, it always makes me wonder why they didn't just design it to be more like thumb studs, but... So it carries very well, perfect tension. I like the grip on the G10. I really like the way it looks. It's very simple. It's very lightweight. It's not extremely comfortable, but it's comfortable enough, especially because of that finger choil and flipper working together right there to really help you lock in, despite the lack of jimping or anything anywhere else. It's not really meant to be a very hard use knife, so who cares? It's just very good looking. And it's very functional for EDC. It's a great, it's an absolutely almost perfect EDC knife. Really, the only hit I can give it is that it's not ambidextrous, and you can't easily open it conventionally. You pretty much have to flick it open, whether you're using the thumb studs or the flipper. There's no ball bearing system on here or anything, so it's just, it, it, you have to just, that's the one issue I do have with it. You have to move your wrist every single time you want to open it. It works okay, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't want to complain too much, it's just, some flippers are just, Excellent. They flick out every single time. You don't need any wrist movement or anything, but this one's kind of, you need to give it just a little bit of a wrist movement. But then again, it was kind of a cheaper knife. Again, we're talking 25, 30 bucks back when these came out, so eh, guess I can't complain. 14C, 28N, it's comparable to 8CR13 MOV in some ways. I don't remember what the downside of it is offhand in comparison. If I want to say it might rust a little bit easier, but I, I, I can't remember. It's going to be very close. It's a cheaper blade still. Gets razor sharp, though. Won't hold an edge forever, but if you just strop up your knife, take care of it, you'll be just fine. Nice detent on here, too. Oh, nice little click. I love that. It just feels high quality. 
I'm really glad they didn't make this assisted either. I know I just complain about you need the wrist flick, but I don't know. I, I, I like manual knives. They just feel more high quality. I feel like I have more control over them. And it's really weird because, again, you can't really open this knife conventionally easily. I mean, I just did it there, but you have to really consciously... There you go. But even then, I, I, I don't want it to be assisted. I'm glad they left this knife manual. Huh. Maybe that's part of the reason why this knife was so damn popular back in the day. And maybe it's the reason so many people are still looking for these things. Again, people are spending $70 to $80 for used Kershaw Skylines. Only 14C, 28 end blade steel for this stinky little knife? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's funny. I remember the Kershaw Nerve, another knife that's made by Kershaw. Same exact materials, pretty much. Much bigger, much wider G10 handle scales, stainless steel liners in there that are skeletonized. It's bigger, it's wider, it's chunkier. You'd think that knife would also cost the same. It's discontinued. But no, you can barely make 25 bucks off of those things. So very interesting how we, despite the smaller knife, despite it being more compact and less materials, even though the materials being the same pretty much, this costs so much more. It's just that much more popular of a knife. I think it's just because it's really good looking and simple. Kershaw, bring this guy back. Seriously, make more Skylines. There's Skyline 2. Maybe change some the blade styles or something. I don't know. Dude, just bring it back. That's what I say. So overall, it's a really cool knife. Um, great for EDC. It's okay for defense. You know, it, it comes out fast enough. You don't goof it up, though. It's just it doesn't open up reliably. So I don't think I would trust this in a really stressful situation. But again, it's not really meant to do that. It's just a good-looking EDC affordable blade. Really awesome knife. Kershaw Skyline. If you want one, go get one soon because these are probably just going to keep going up in price. For such a simple knife with no fancy materials or anything, it's kind of funny to think we're still wanting them that bad and paying that much for them. So really interesting. So anyway, there it is. Kershaw Skyline. Really awesome EDC blade.